You're watching AndyTube, and this is a video, a part three, of a restoration of a Singer PA style sewing machine motor. So in part two, uh, I showed you how to how easy it is to remove the the brushes and check them and so forth. So in part three, I'm going to dismantle it now because uh, I like to, to really clean things up and check stuff inside and, and so forth. So, uh, most, I, I will tell you, most people approach it, if they do take one, one of these off and they, they see that end of the commutator and the brush tube and the wire, and the, oh, so uh, they, they tend to migrate up here to the, um, motor housing screws and loosen these and then pull the end cover off and that's usually a mistake because those um, brush lead you know terminals how they're clipped in there with the brush holder and stuff those can rip out and break off um, a lot of times people get them halfway, get this end cover halfway off and they start to feel that something's hanging up, you know, and it's usually that uh, brush lead terminal and stuff. If they get it far enough, those brushes which are resting on the commutator and the commutator's pulled out, the brushes just come flying out into the, into the space <laughs> and uh, they're really spring loaded, you know, and if they if they aren't damaged they they kind of go down inside the bottom of this and then a lot of times people will say oh maybe this is a mistake and they'll push the two parts back together which can really damage the the brushes and the springs and stuff so um, what the I'm, I'm going to show you how I do it and what's worked out the best for me over the years and we're going to take off the brush covers and uh, you're already an old pro at this I uh, maybe I should have ended part two by saying uh, you can leave the brush covers off <laughs> but um, so there's one let me, let me take the other one here what we want to do by taking these brush covers off, we're going to expose the brush holder, um, the carbon brush and spring, and those uh, brush lead terminals. So we, we, we want to prepare those before we take stuff off. Okay, so we've got our, uh, we've got our everything exposed here. Right. So if you remember, I'll just pull that little brush holder up at the end gently and get ready for it to come flying out. Okay. And I'll go do the other one while I'm here. I'll just pull up on the end of that brush holder and take it with the carbon brush and the spring. Now, this is, this is kind of funny because um, when, when you're trying to replace the brushes, this brush lead terminals always seem to want to pop out and get loose. But now we want to purposely take them out. S the thing is, they're just like soldered with a little bit of solder onto the brush lead wire. So this is a, this is a little delicate. You just don't don't be don't be too forceful uh, you can use a, a plier you know I mean it's not an eggshell that's going to break on you but just gently pry them out of that space and then I like to get down in there and actually get the wire a hold of the wire because I have broken that terminal off of the wire and had to re-solder it and it's it's a pain so I'm just going to get it out here and kind of get it off from being tucked in right 
And I'll come to this other one here and kind of pull it up. Come on you. There we go. See, I got it loose now. And I manipulate it by the wire more than the than the terminal. Get it loose and ready to come off because now when I when I go to take this off um, you know I, I don't have to worry about breaking the solder joint and stuff like that right okay now I'm going to come back onto the pinion uh, armature shaft and and I've got the two motor housing screws one on each side so now I'm going to loosen those and prepare to take them out. Now if you notice, I'm, I'm holding the end cover and the motor housing at the same time. I just don't, I just don't want those you know, to come flying out. Now down here at this end, uh, what is this thing called? Uh, Jeez, mm. uh, I'll have to think about that for a minute. But this little brass, what is that, a hexagon? Two, three, yeah. Um, that's what both screws um, screw into. And it, and it fits in a little space right there for it. You know, it just goes in like that and it goes flush and then the end cover the brush cover screw grows goes in this end and take that out and the motor housing screw goes in the other end of that so now I've got that out I can take out the motor housing screw okay now let's Keeping everything kind of together here, let's hold on to it and we'll go take out. We'll go take out the other motor housing screw. And I still haven't remembered the end of that, the name of that brass nut. I'll have to think about that. I think they're called the they're called the end end cover insert. That's what they are, because they're inserted right into the end cover there. End cover insert, threaded inside. So now we can take out the other uh, motor housing screw. Okay, now. We can separate the two parts and we can do it real gently so that we don't snag these brush lead terminals on anything and, and rip them off the wires. Okay, and uh, those two pins are called the motor housing terminal. Uh, motor housing terminal post and th there's wire th those are on wires that go to the other part of the motor so you have to be careful with those and between the plastic and the aluminum and behind those pins is a little wedge called the motor housing terminal post insulation and a lot of times when, when people are taking the motor apart, that just kind of falls out by the wayside. And when they go to put the motor back together, they, they don't know what it's for. So, let's just gently start taking it off. Right? Whoa, look at that. So what's going to happen is the armature is going to come out, and that's, and that's a good thing. Just going to slide that right out. Okay, and then you're going to gently lay it there. And here's that terminal post insulation I was talking about. I don't know what the material is. 
something that insulates for sure I don't know if it's mica back from those days or just a plastic wedge but I have cracked one in half before so just gently lay it to the side and now you see the other part that a lot of people don't notice when they're taking the mm, taking the motor apart and it just drops and they don't know what it is but this is the field core wedge and you see it's just wedged up in there to a little space and when you put the motor housing on the other end of that wedge wedges up in this space okay so you can just unwedge it or pull it right out it's just like this little bent piece of steel and that's the field core wedge okay now you can separate the field coil and its coils from the end cover and this is where you want to be careful you can see how the terminal posts are just going to slide out there you see that and then you want to watch these ends kind of gently poke them in the hole with your finger so they don't get caught on anything and hey now you have the end cover off and you can see way down in there the the bearing the commutator shaft bearing and uh, shaft bearing retainer which are removable and I did it once but whoo man was it tough getting it back in there so I clean it good and dry it good but I don't take it out anymore so you got the end cover off and this silverish part here is the field core core and these copper wirings are the coils okay and then the armature sits up in that core like that and spins so we'll just set this core aside for a moment because I want to talk about uh, well wait let's let's take out the field coil insulator right so the copper wound copper wiring there I call them the copper wreaths um, you know electricity is flowing through there and we don't want it to touch the, uh, the aluminum uh, motor housing so they put this little plastic insulator in there and I want you to take that out and just be gentle uh, don't force it because it's not it's kind of like a little bit brittle I, th I feel so there we go you see all the carbon dust and everything on that so we want to clean we want to clean that up but that is the coil insulator the feed coil insulator right it's going to sit in the back like that and it's going to provide insulation between those coils and the motor housing so you sure don't want to lose that or forget to put it back in <laughs> yikes okay now put this back down so there is there is you know one steel shaft that runs through this whole thing okay and down here they call it the commutator shaft or uh, you know because this is the uh, armature and the commutator so they just call it the the commutator shaft or commu the commutator 
end shaft, meaning it's on this end. And up here they call the shaft on this end the armature shaft. But any, sh any shaft like that for a motor like this has to have bearings. So there is a bearing that's pressed into here to support the shaft on the armature end. And on the commutator end, that's what that bearing down in there is. Is to support the commutator end. So when the motor's put together, the shaft is supported at both ends. So what I'm what I'm getting to here is when you take the motor apart, you've got the shaft, commutator, armature, and everything is only being supported by the armature and bearing. So you, you can see how it wiggles around a little bit. And you do not want to damage that bearing. So when you're working with this, you, you, you just be careful and don't, don't bang it around and slam it down and because you'll overstress that bearing up there. Okay. Now, this um, is as disassembled as I'm going to take it. Um, like I said, there, there is a bearing retainer in there. And you, it's, if you saw it in the picture slide, um, you know, you can push down on the tabs at both ends and twist it sideways to get out from under the clip. But it is really, really stiff metal and the clearance is practically nothing because it's holding that bearing and the motor is sitting in here like this in the you know in the sewing machine right it's, you know standing up like that so it's taking all the weight and spin and everything so they they want that um, bearing to be real secure so the retaining clip is a real uh, tight fit like I said, I took it off once because I wanted to see it. But uh, now I, you know, I, when I clean it, I, I clean it and then I use a Q-tip inside to make sure it's clean and stuff. But um, this is where you would want to clean the small parts the way I've shown in my other videos. Do not clean the mm, carbon brushes or spring but the brush holders you can. Um, the end inserts you can. All the screws you can. The wedge you can. Um, the end cover you can. The, insula the insulator you can. And the brush covers you can. And I'll, I'll, I'll put an ending thing on the video maybe with a reference to one of those small parts cleaning with crud cutter and uh, you know you clean them and and dry them so then in um, part four I'll show you how to clean the commutator and the uh, the rest of it okay how I clean it so don't jump ahead of me, just clean those small parts, okay? If you don't have crud cutter, use alcohol. But watch the video, I'll put a link. Hey, thanks for watching part three. Hang in there for part four. I think I got you hooked now, right? <laughs> Take care.